In 1917, uh, Itzra went to Philips and together they developed this valve, the EDZ, called after Itzra. Um, and Itzra could sell these valves for 1250 and it was a giant leap for the radio receivers. Amateurs could um, buy this and create a radio with which they could receive signals. I am Bas Achterberg, media historian at the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. This machine is a level gouge and uh, it was used to detect espionage stations and zeppelins flying to London. Uh, Itzada started his own company called Wireless in 1914, which was probably a sign of the times. Uh, and he, he created this for the Ministry of War and that was probably the reason that he got his permits for his radio experiments. Itzra experimented with the transmission of his signal and to test the quality of the signal he used this machine. Uh, he also sold this machine as a receiver so uh, and that was very important to him uh, selling as much radios as possible. You can see his craftsmanship, the machine looks beautiful One of the reasons that Itzada was so successful when he started broadcasting in 1919 was that uh, there already was a group of radio amateurs who could receive his broadcastings. Um, and uh, Jan Korver uh, was the main reason this group existed. Well, uh, this is him and what you see on this cupboard is his collection. I'm Carleen Boy, I'm collection specialist at the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. In 1915, when uh, it was prohibited by law to have a receiver as a, a public person, he wrote this guide on how to build a receiver. When it was published, everybody wanted to have this book and it was sold out immediately. So it was extremely popular during the whole period till the end of uh, 1917 when radio receivers were uh, prohibited. One other publication that's really special um, is even from an earlier date, it's from 1913. The Panorama, which was a, a magazine, a Dutch magazine, in its first year of publishing, it published an article as first magazine on radio amateurs. And as you can see, it's beautifully illustrated. It shows a lot of photos from uh, Corvus' uh, private collection. He also had a lab he experimented and uh, he collected stuff. And in this article, he wrote about radio amateurism and also about the law of that moment. Um, and you can see that some of the uh, receivers uh, were built in a cigar box. And this one is a perfect example of what we just saw in the magazine. 